some say Antigua. Antigua is the Spanish pronunciation because of the whole Columbus thing. And in Spanish, Antigua means ancient. But we were colonized by the British in 1632, so it's pronounced Antigua. Meet Pale Bo, a digital nomad from Denmark on an epic journey around the world. My name is Pale Bo, and I'm a longtime radio producer. In 2013, I started planning to become a digital nomad and a full-time traveler. Three years later, I had sold my house, my car, and all my furniture. And in July 2016, I set out on a quest to visit every country in the world. In this podcast, I'm taking you along on my journey. And I'm sharing my ups and downs and let you listen in to conversations with some interesting people I meet along the way. This is the Radio Vagabond Podcast. It's seven o'clock on Tuesday morning and I am about to fly to Antigua in the country of Antigua and Barbuda. It's a week's trip with a, with a group of other influencers and I'm really looking forward to meeting them and getting to know them. I know a few of them before, but just a few of them and uh, I have a feeling that in a week I'll have a big group of new friends and uh, it's going to be amazing. When I started planning my journey, I had one trip across the Atlantic, but my plans didn't stick, so this is time number six I'm crossing the Atlantic, and actually number seven comes in just a week. It's only a week I'm going to spend on Antigua, but I'm so looking forward to it. I'm about to meet the group in a few seconds. Morning. Normally I give you the episodes in a chronological order, but this one, um, yeah, I, I want to give you this one before uh, the other. So this is happening in May of 2019. My name is Palabo, and this is the Radio Vagabond Podcast. And here's some guys. How are you? <laughs> you <right? laughs> <laughs> morning. Good morning. Good morning. I'm going to Antigua. Uh, okay. Uh, with a big group. Yeah. Do you have your uh, boarding pass? No. No. Okay. Um, if you just wait. Um. As I'm checking my bag into the Virgin Atlantic counter and meeting the group, let me give you a few facts about the country we're about to visit. First of all, you've heard me say Antigua, and you will hear me do that again. That was before I learned that it's pronounced Antigua and not Antigua, which is what you would think when you see it in writing. And I feel that it's an honest mistake. You see, it's named after a church in Sevilla in Spain, Santa Maria la Antigua. And in Spanish, it is Antigua. The clip you heard in the beginning of the episode was from a tour bus a few days later. You'll also hear me talk about this in a few minutes when I realize my mistake. Until then, bear with me. Set your uh, watches back uh, five hours from uh, UK time. Antigua and Barbuda is a country in the West Indies, lying between the Caribbean Sea and the Atlantic Ocean. It consists of two major islands, Antigua and Barbuda. The nation also includes the tiny inhabited island Redonda, now a nature preserve. The permanent population is about 80,000 and the capital, at the largest port and city, is St. John on Antigua. We go on a direct transatlantic flight from London to Antigua. I think we've finally landed into Antigua, so a very warm welcome to Antigua, ladies and gentlemen. The local time here is just coming up to 20 minutes to 2 in the afternoon. And while we taxi to the gate, please keep your seatbelt fastened until the captain turns off the fasten seatbelt signs. All of us need to remain seated and keep the aisles and exits clear, so we'll return any items we've stowed for you as soon as we arrive. 
Okay, so now we landed in Antigua. See, I've been saying Antigua for a long time, and now I notice that on the speaker system here in the the, the flight, they they say Antigua, uh, not Antigua. Um, so I need to find out how to pronounce it the right way. But anyway, now I'm here and uh, looking down from from the air. It looks amazing. I can't wait to explore this this beautiful island. Juana? Okay. Thank you. As we're getting off the plane and going through immigrations and being greeted by a small local band in the arrival terminal, let me give you a few more details about the country. The island of Antigua was explored by Christopher Columbus in 1493. The first Europeans that stayed here on the island was Spanish and French, but they soon decided to leave the island due to the lack of fresh water. Then it was colonized by Britain in 1632 and Barbuda Island in 1678. They grew tobacco and ginger on Antigua using slaves from Africa. After 347 years as a British colony, Antigua and Barbuda gained independence in 1981. The country remains a member of the Commonwealth and Elizabeth II is the country's queen. In a moment I meet more people from the group and get on the bus that will take us to where we're going to be staying the next week. That's in a minute on the Radio Vagabond when the program continues. Produced by radioguru.co.uk, this is the Radio Vagabond. My name is Palabo. Stay with us. I share so much about what I do in this podcast, and now I'd like to hear from you. Where are you and what are you doing right now when you're listening to this episode? One of the emails I already got was from Peter. He writes, Hi Pelle, just having listened to one of your podcasts with Tom Tom, and it brought back so many memories from almost five years of travel I did in the 80s when backpacking was the real thing. No iPhone, Google Maps or GPS. Now I'm in my late 50s and still traveling a lot. I do envy your freedom to go wherever you want on your time, schedule and desire. If you're ever in Fort Myers area in southwestern Florida, you're always welcome to stay at my house. From one traveler to another, my house is your house. My name is Peter and I grew up in Denmark, but I've now lived abroad for 40 years. I still speak and understand Danish, but never really use it. My goal is also to see as many countries in the world as possible. Keep chasing your dream and hopefully one day we'll meet over a drink and talk about our travel experiences. All the best, Peter. Thank you so much, Peter, for your email. I will absolutely make a note on that and take you up on your offer the next time I'm in Florida. And I would so much like to hear from you as well. Just tell me where you are and what you're doing right now. Send your email to listener at theradiovagabond.com. If you're using WhatsApp, you can also send me a voice message. Send it to plus 45 40 105 105. Thank you. Now back to Antigua. What's your name again? Yolanda. Yolanda and? Hello. Say that again. <laughs> I get that all the time. Hello, Yeah, just As we get outside the terminal, we have time to shake a few more hands before we get on the bus. I remember looking around and thinking, I bet there are many new friends right here. Sandy. Sandy. Okay. Yolanda. Sandy. Sandy. Yeah, that's fine. They'll be like... We're a group of around 40 content creators on this trip. There are some of the world's best travel bloggers, YouTubers, Instagrammers, and then we're two podcasters. I've already talked to a few of them in 
the special bonus episodes of this podcast, like Travel Tom Tom, Adventurous Kate, Dane and Stacy, and then Paul and Michael from Traverse Events. And they are the organizers of kind of a mini conference here in Antigua. We're staying at a place around 30 minutes from the airport, and they had two small buses waiting for us. We're staying at a place called the Veranda Resort and Spa, an all-inclusive resort. The experience starts as soon as we arrive, when we're welcomed with an inviting tropical drink. And then we get the keycard and jump on a small golf cart that will take us up and down the hills inside the resort to our cottage. All the cottages in the resort have names named after different destinations in the Caribbean. By pure coincidence, my villa was called Antigua. I felt a bit privileged to be the one getting that one. I'm just entering my uh, apartment that I'm staying in here at the, this place in Antigua. It's in a resort called the uh, Veranda and uh, it's it's down to the water and it's just so beautiful. As I enter, the first thing on my right here is a bathroom with two sinks and a, a big shower. Beautiful and it's decorated. They, they put uh, red leaves of, from flowers everywhere. It's just so beautiful. You can see that they do really an extra effort. And then when I enter the big room, and it is a big room uh, with two queen-size beds a couch, a working area, a huge TV, and a small kitchen. And then almost the best part comes out here. It's it's a big balcony, uh, and it's overlooking the bay. And uh, there's a sailboat out there, and I can, when I look to my right, I can see the ocean is out there. But um, just across from here, it, it's in a bay area, and it, and uh, across from here, maybe 300 feet, there's a, there's, I don't know if that, no, I think that's just villas over there. Hi! Nice view, isn't it? And looking down at the water, it's turquoise it's it's oh it's so beautiful yeah I, I just have this all to myself and uh some of the other people from the group are are next uh, next to me uh, wow and it's hot here the weather is it's a little bit cloudy but um most of all is a blue sky even though the weather forecast said it's going to be totally cloudy today oh let me have a glass of water before going up to the pool area and meeting the other guys. My cottage is around 700 square feet and classic Caribbean style architecture and decor with a private balcony or a veranda as they call it with a beautiful view through sliding glass doors. This is on this balcony. I spent most of my time when I was here and also where I did the interviews that I published in the last month. It has the look and feel of a cozy Caribbean cottage with whitewashed trim and palais green exterior with a porch in the front. The resort is in a quite big area with I don't know how many cottages. They call them villas and suites. The suites can accommodate up to four people and the villas up to six people. There are quite a bit of small roads inside the resort with lots of hills. It's a good way to get exercise or if you're lazy you can jump on one of the small open golf cart buses they have driving back and forth. Or even just pick up the phone in your cottage and say that you would like one to drop by and pick you up. There's quite a few dining options with a great variety of restaurants and beach grills. 
When you stay here, the all-inclusive package includes breakfast, lunch and dinner, as well as afternoon tea and snacks throughout the day. You'll also have an unlimited alcoholic and non-alcoholic drinks, including water, juice, milk, soft drinks, wine, beer, liquor and cocktails. Besides two cruises that I did in 2018, this is the first time I've done all-inclusive on this trip. And just about everything is included. Dinner, activities, experiences, stunning beaches, fitness facilities, a nice mini golf course, evening entertainment and much more. I'm just around the corner from the main pool, where we also find the main bar and the evening entertainment. Steel bands, DJs, karaoke, local performers, guest participation contests and much more. This is the Radio Vagabond Podcast. If you're one of those people that have shared this podcast on social media, or maybe just told a friend out there in real life, I just want to say thank you, thank you so much. That means so much to me. Thank you so much. When I say just about everything is included, I did find one thing that wasn't, and I learned this the hard way. It was totally my own fault, and everybody laughed and said that I should absolutely know that obviously laundry service wasn't included in a resort. I had a few t-shirts and other stuff that needed a wash. Normally, I would just do that in the sink in the bathroom. And remember, here I have two of those, so it would have been easy. Instead, I called the reception and asked, Do you have laundry service? Absolutely. Just use one of the bags in the closet and put it outside, and we'll stop by and pick it up. So I did. I think I had three t-shirts, four pairs of underwear and some socks. A few hours later, as they were already doing the laundry, they called me and said that I forgot to fill out the form. The form? I said. I didn't know anything about a form. Oh, don't worry, we've already done it for you. It's on the table in the living room. And then I saw it. My bag of laundry added up to, wait for it, 82 US dollars. I was totally in shock, but then again, I should have known. So, travel tip of the week, never use laundry service in a resort. Pure and simple, use the sink. Put the wet clothes on a towel and roll it up tight and twist it as hard as you can. Then you hang it and it will be dry the next morning. That's something I do all the time just not here. <laughs> $82. Ouch. Veranda Resort and Spa is owned and operated by Elite Island Resorts. They have seven other resorts in the country and next to us they're building number eight. The place we're staying is a very beautiful uh, a place with palm trees and uh, small roads and a pool area and restaurants and uh, all these uh, beautiful cottages uh, that uh, that we're staying in. But right next to it, they're building uh, an even more luxurious place, and uh, we're invited there to to check out what it looks like so far and uh, to see one of the cabins that is already done and furnished. Uh, so we're that's why I'm walking and getting out of breath here. Um, so we're, we're we're going there now, and uh, it's going to be exciting. Um, Hamako is situated on seven. It's built in seven acres of land. It's 42 cottages. 36 of them are of this size, which is 1,225 square feet, 1,220 to be exact. And we have six units that are 975 square feet, which are the front ones over here. We have 
two restaurants. So, so Brian, we're we're at a construction site, and yes. uh, we're in inside one of the cottages that is is, is is done now, and it is just the most amazing thing. Can you help me describe it? Uh, we're in we're in the main living room here, or the, the, main, the main bedroom. It's the it's the main bedroom living area. Yeah, it, it, it's, there's, a, there's a king size bed here. King size with a, bed with a, a six a foot fan. fan yeah. Everything is insulated. It's, it's a very cool room. The floor is a luxury vinyl tile, so it's very soft on the feet. Yeah. Um, you have your TV built in. Oh wow! Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. And then the the, the, the bathroom is a bathroom is a chapter is a, of its own. The bathroom is a, the bathroom is as a size that is bigger than most. Some of London's <laughs> hotel rooms, yeah. right? Yeah. My daughter had an apartment in London. The, the bathroom's oh, yeah. bigger than that. Yes, for sure. And um, it's a double shower head. All the, um, the shower heads have Bluetooth, so you can play yeah, your music. How, how does that work? Bluetooth we, in the shower? It, you just do it from your cell phone. Oh, my God. And the rooms will all have a Bluetooth um, speaker system, yeah. so you can do your own, your own thing yeah. as well. And, and the, the shower room is, is big enough for any kind of exercise? <laughs> well, yeah. it, <laughs> well, that, that's my thing. You can do any kind of exercise you want inside yeah. the shower. And then outside, every every cottage will will have its own uh, small pool on the deck. Every every cottage has uh, its own plunge pool, which is um, a, a nine by nine pool. Yes, yeah, it's not it's not a big uh, no, uh, no, Olympic size it, pool. It, it's, it's a plunge uh, pool yeah, with, yeah. A, with a with a vanishing edge and a, and a view of the uh, the sea the to die for. In, for. Yes. Yeah. But this is uh, this is being built right now. Can you tell me a little bit more about this area? It's it's called the Hammock the Hammock Cove, and it's yeah. it's on it's on the area in Antigua known as Devil's Bridge, which is a very historic um, piece of the island. Um, and we're gonna we, we I mean we're gonna dress it up, make it look. When we're finished with it, it's going to be actually very lush land, very well landscaped. Yeah. It's going to be like nothing that is here in Antigua. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. And, and the place we're staying in right now is is so beautiful, but this is taking it yeah. up a, a, a yeah. notch. I wouldn't say a notch; just taking it up several notches. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And there's also going to be obviously a, a, a nice sandy beach here. It's uh, going to be a, it's an elevated sandy beach, so okay. we don't have we don't have the, um, the the beach underwater. Environmentally, we couldn't do it, so we did a, we did an elevated beach, which will then have a wood deck below it. So you walk down to the wood deck, and you'll be 18 inches. Of the water, which is crystal clear. So, is is that a new, technically a new beach? Would that be beach number three six six? No, I did three sixty six already. Maybe three sixty seven. Oh. <laughs> three sixty six is actually at the um, Sir Vivian Richards oh, okay, um, okay. Stadium. Okay, but but at, at, even though the the, the beach is uh, uh, water in the ocean is just so beautiful and here in the cove, but you're also going to build swimming pools. Yeah, the swimming pool is going to be quite an exciting pool. It's it's um, it's going to be split in three levels, eight feet. Each level is eight feet different, mm-hmm. and you're going to have waterfalls between each oh. pool, and then you'll have a vanishing edge right at the at the bottom. So when you're walking on the beach, you will see the the, the vanishing edge. Against the water, we'll have a small mini bar down there as well to service the clients down. We're going to have um, gazebos all along the beach for people to be in. Yeah. So it's and, going and, to be quite, and, quite and, exciting. Yeah, and, and obviously this is so luxurious. It's it's not going to be a budget vacation people go for here. It's pe- people who want something out of the ordinary. Somebody wants something special. Some so a lot of privacy, a lot of service, good yeah. food. That's what this is about. And is 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 this something because uh, the the tourism in Antigua is is booming, or is it? Um... Tourism is doing well. I mean, I, but this is just taking it to a different level, a different concept. It's more the cottage type hotel, which is more privacy. You know, it, it's a it's, it's a great vacation. And then the the main the main building that we're doing here, the reception building. I don't know if we're going to go actually look at it. It's, it's in construction, but it's going to be. I mean, off the charts as well. It's, it's, it's going to be finished as good or better than this is. It's, it's really going to be a very a, a lot of attention to detail. On, on and, and, and huge. And it's huge. It's, it's a massive building. And spa. And the spa results. The common areas for a 42-room hotel is actually extremely large in this particular hotel. So, I mean, you have to understand this is in seven acres, 42 rooms, 82 people. I mean, you can really have a private vacation here. That was all we have time for in this episode. But I have so much more to share from this trip. So there'll be two more episodes already this week here from Antigua. 
In a few days, you can join me when I tell you more about the place we're staying in. Also, I go to Sailing Academy and learn how to maneuver a small sailboat. So if Amelia was the wind and I want to get to Amelia, yeah, I would have to go to where, what's your name? Pella. Pella? Close enough. Okay, close enough. <laughs> I'll have to go to where it's close enough, <laughs> and then... Much more to come here from Antigua. This trip to Antigua was made possible by Antigua and Barbuda Tourism and Elite Island Resort. But everything I've said in this episode is my genuine opinion. See more on visitantiguabarbuda.com and verandaresortandspa.com. The Radio Vagabond is produced by radioguru.co.uk. On theradiovagabond.com you can see pictures and all the links I mention. My name is Palabo. See you in a few days. Bye.